Thank you very much, folks. Welcome back to the show. My first guest tonight will be appearing right across the street from us at Radio City Music Hall on April 18th through the 29th, Mr. Showmanship himself. It's a pleasure to welcome Liberace. <laughs> Nice to see you. Did you well, see uh, Paul's lava I, lamp there? I sure did. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you How did you begin with the uh, the candelabra? Well, seriously, <laughs> I I saw <laughs> I saw a, a movie in 1945. Called a song to remember. Yeah, who's in the film? Uh, Cornell Wilde, Merle Oberon. It was based on the life of Chopin. And the next day, I was opening at the Persian Room at the Plaza Hotel, following a very popular and famous uh, star, uh, Hildegard, who that was her room. And Hildegard. I, Hildegard. What, now, what did Hildegard do? Is, is Hildegard still with us? Yes, she is. And what, what would, if we were to go see her, what would she be doing? Well, Hildegard was perhaps one of the most famous Chanteuse Supper Club performers. She played the piano, she sang, she wore gloves, and she gave away roses uh -huh. and things. She had a, a real fabulous Supper Club style. A real uptown class kind of deal here. Strictly class, yeah. yeah. And she wore beautiful gowns and everything. So uh, I was following her at the Persian Room, so... I figured, well, she's got the gloves and the rose. I got to have some kind of a gimmick. So I saw the movie the day before I opened, and the candelabra was such an important prop used in the life of Chopin. I went to Third Avenue after seeing the movie, and I bought the prettiest candelabra I could find. And the next night, I opened at the Persian Room, and I had a, had them turn off all the lights in the uh, Persian Room, and then an attendant walked in with the candelabra and set it on the piano. Oh, that's nice. And it got the attention of the people. They thought somebody important is going to come. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> and <laughs> I walked in and I started to do my show. And it was an instant overnight trademark. Yeah. And I've had it ever since. Yeah, that's terrific. Let me ask you about your name. Now, you mentioned Hildegard. Yeah. And then Paul and I were talking about the other night, Cher. See, I maintain if Cher wants to be a serious actress, she's got to come up with a last name. <laughs> And, and your name is Liberace. Now, was there was there ever another? Uh, yes. Is that your real name? Was it part That's of a name? That's my family name. It's your family name. My father's name, uh -huh. Liberace. And I was christened uh, Polish for Walter, which no one could pronounce, called Władziu. That's Walter Władziu in Polish. Is, okay. And then my mother was a great fan of Rudolf Valentino, so my second name was Valentino. So I was Walter Valentino Liberace, and that uh -huh. took up the whole sign, you know, yes. so... We dropped the first two names, and I legally became a one-name person. You, you, I vote with one name. I have a passport in one name. And sometimes I, uh, I have a little problem explaining it. You know, I said, you got to have a first name. Yeah. You got it. I said, why? <laughs> My friends call me Lee. Uh -huh. So that's it. I have a painting at home that's signed Letterman. Did you ever paint? No, I never did any painting. Well, somebody's, <laughs> somebody's using a, your is name. It a, is it a nice <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. I, 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 well, what kind of work is it? I hesitate to tell you. I have it in the bathroom. <laughs> but it's a nice painting. You're, you're obviously very proud of it, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it captures your attention. No, I have. This is the first I've heard of this. You know, when you're sitting, I gotta have something to look at. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's a good painting. Yeah. It really is. It's well, I don't. I don't know the person who did it, but that's it's interesting. Just Letterman is not a common name, by the way. I didn't think so. No, That's no. why I thought maybe you had a business going on. That's inside. why I'm just changing my name to Dave. I think. <laughs> um, now I, want, I wanted to ask you about. Uh, did you ever work under any other name? But we got to go away here. Think that over. I will. And then uh, we'll come back with uh, Liberace, folks. Come on back. <laughs> Liberace is here. Tell me, tell me about this picture, if you will. This is a. Uh, there's got to be a great story with this. If not, it's a great picture anyway. Oh, thank you. The first time Elvis Presley ever played Las Vegas. He was booked on a bill with Freddie Martin's orchestra at the Frontier Hotel. Now, that Hotel. right away sounds like a mistake. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
the kids loved him, but he wasn't, at that time, he wasn't ready for the adult audiences yeah. in Vegas. And uh, Colonel Parker, who is a friend of mine, said, would you come over and do some publicity pictures with Elvis? And uh, so we traded jackets. He's wearing my jacket, and I took his guitar. And we, this picture went all over the world. And uh, Elvis was so impressed with the fact that I wore sparkly jackets. He said, could I wear a sparkly outfit in my next movie? Would you mind, you know? And he so thought he thought that you owned the, uh, the rights to wear yeah. a sparkly jacket. Yeah. <laughs> this is his jacket, which uh -huh. I gave back to him. Yeah, a sedate yeah. little number yeah. there. And uh, in his next movie, he wore not only a gold lime jacket, but he had pants to match. Oh, yeah. So you were, in a way, responsible for uh, a change in his wardrobe. You right? know, we all ever since that picture was taken, we were very good friends. Every opening night, he would send me a guitar, all made out of yeah. flowers, and I would send him on his opening night a piano, all made out of flowers. He Big was a real stalker. nice guy. What, what year yeah. was that? Was that taken? You know, that was taken in 1956. Yeah. Now you, you brought up the clothes and so forth, and you got some things here. Uh, some items. I want to get back to the thing about another name that you okay, may have worked okay. under. But we have here a list uh, entitled Liberace the Collector. Do you mind if I share the folks, no. share with the folks some items on here? It's a collector. I'm right? anxious to hear. A $150,000 floor length black diamond mink coat lined with 40,000 two and a half carat Austrian rhinestones. What's that, just for the house? <laughs> <laughs> a velvet cape. <laughs> covered with $60,000 worth of chinchilla, styled after the coronation robes of King George V and especially designed for Liberace's first royal command performance. My, oh my. Here's some jewelry. Is it all right if I read this on sure. the... Sure. Okay. A candelabra ring with platinum candlesticks and diamond flames. Oh, you have that one here. I have that one. Oh, can we show... Oh sure. my goodness. It's this one over there. There you okay. go. There you go. Oh. And what, what's that plain little thing on your small finger? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, brother, what is that? That's uh, three tours of South Africa. Oh, At the end oh. of each tour, uh, my promoters gave me a diamond ring, so I wanted to wear them all at once, but oh, I ran sure. out of well, fingers. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got home, I said, put those three rings together so I can wear them all at once. Let me see. Then, Tell me about this uh, giant purple stone here. What is that thing? Well, this is probably the ring I'm most proud of. This was given to me for the Royal Command performance that you now, It was originally a paperweight, though, wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> originally Actually, a doorstop, then a paperweight, and now... It was designed by the same jewelers who do all the jewelry for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. So I'm very proud of it. I've never bought a piece of jewelry for myself. It was all been given. Con uh, the Baron Hilton gave me the piano ring, which is <laughs> air conditioned. Oh, yes. heavens, that's unbelievable. And this is the piano watch, which my manager gave me for my 35th anniversary in show business. Uh -huh. And now I'm about to celebrate my 40th that's right, anniversary. Your 40th. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a watch with my nickname on. This is I, I mean, a uh, yeah. bracelet with my nickname. We're going to have to get to some welders masks for the audience. The, <laughs> the glare here may be a little intense. Well, those are uh, some amazing pieces of jewelry. Tell me now uh, about ever having worked under a different name. Did that? Yes, I did. Uh, I didn't choose the name. I was about to uh, be soloist. This is when I was about 19 years old. Uh, with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And back in those days, I was also appearing with a dance band, the J. Mills Dance Orchestra, and we were on a very popular radio show called the Fitch Bandwagon. The Fitch and Bandwagon? Fitch Bandwagon, yes. Is that still on the air? No. <laughs> <laughs> that went out with the big band. Uh -huh. And uh, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra manager found out that I was playing in a dance band and he was very upset. He said, unless you use a different name for your dance band work, we won't let you perform with the Chicago Symphony mm -hmm. Orchestra. So I went to the orchestra leader, Jay Mills, and I said, you got to give me a different name for at least six months. After I play with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, then I can use my real name. Right. So he had to come up with a name, so he called me Walter Buster Keys. Oh, that's good. Terrible name. Yeah, that wouldn't look good in diamonds on a bracelet. <laughs> no, sirree. But I, I, you'd be surprised. The name caught on. 
It did. <laughs> and to this day, I have people come up to me and they say, you know, I used to know a piano player <laughs> by the name of Buster. Are you Buster? <laughs> Do I look like the Buster? <laughs> uh, you're going to play something for us tonight, you? want you? me to? Oh, yeah, if you don't mind. Welcome back. Uh, coming up on this program tonight, we're going to take a five-minute break with our own beloved Bob Rooney, also from Educating Rita. Julie Walters is here Monday. Shelley Winters will be on the show, Tom Dreesen, and uh, plenty of fun. You will be at Radio City Music Hall. This is the room that was built for you. This is a perfect match. Have you ever been there before? I've seen many shows. In fact, I just saw the Christmas show, which was spectacular, and it really, first time this year I really got But you've never mood. worked in there, huh? Never did. I worked the Roxy Theater years yeah. ago. Which and you're going to use all the stuff, right? Everything. Yeah. The dancing water, the, uh, the, the what cars, else? The lasers, the smoke bombs. I'm bringing all the pianos. <laughs> and yeah. Everything. So that's uh, April, what are the dates? I open uh, the Wednesday before Easter. And I'll be there for 10 performances. And this is to help celebrate your 40th anniversary in That's showbiz? That's right. That's amazing. What are you going to do tonight? Well, if it's not too late, I'd like to let some of that uh, holiday music out that oh. I heard today. We would be delighted. I was inspired by it. This is, this is a nice touch. Liberace, ladies and gentlemen.
Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Have a good New Year's. We'll be right back, folks. Liberace.